Hello, how's everyone doing tonight? It's okay, I'll do the seventh person to ask you or something. But no, as, as was said, my name is James King, which is a great name to have because it appears as white on a resume. <laughs> you know, I really don't get past, you know, the interview process, but at least I got a foot in the door. You know? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that's a joke about institutional racism. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to explain that. Like, not, not every crowd's gonna get that. You guys seem like a smart crowd. You, you all seem to get it. Uh, I'm originally from two hours north of here. Uh, I'm from the North Country. <laughs> oh God, that's scary. <laughs> that's, uh, where are you guys from? Uh, Plattsburgh, New York. Plattsburgh, holy shit. <laughs> One of the, the only town that has an active KKK group in New York State. <laughs> I mean, it's okay, I'm not assuming you're in it. I mean, if you made it down here, okay. But no, I mean, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Port Henry. I'm right off Lake Champlain, uh, in the middle of fucking nowhere. You know, where the, where the number of brain cells and the number of teeth get really close and really small. That's, that's the area I'm from. And uh, not everyone there gets jokes about institutional racism because they've never seen a black person, so they don't get it. <laughs> and uh, I told that joke in a bar. I was doing, I was doing an hour show there, and I opened with it, and it went over so poorly that I said it a second time. <laughs> That's how poorly it went over. Uh, so, and I told, I told my fiance before the show, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna open with this joke," and she tried to tell me not to do it. And she was like. James, you realize that like no one, no one in the North Country knows what institutional racism is. And I said, yeah, well, no one can spell institutional racism in the North Country. I'm still gonna do the fucking joke. <laughs> but no, speaking speak of race, uh, I had something very important happen recently. I finally found out Justin Bieber stopped trying to be black. Oh, that's so exciting! Does anyone notice that Justin Bieber stopped trying to act black? Is it, oh, I'm the only one up on this. Well, I'll, 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 I'll let you guys know. The reason I know is Justin Bieber just came out on his new album. He has a song called Sorry. Have you guys heard Sorry? It's on the radio a lot. Uh, the reason I know Justin Bieber is no longer trying to act black is because black people won't apologize for anything. <laughs> like, we won't apologize for shit you catch us doing. And I, I have examples. Anyone know the song It Wasn't Me by Shaggy? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, basically the entire song is him cheating on someone. It's like, oh, she caught me, she caught me cheating, what should I do? I just say it wasn't you. What? Even caught me on camera. It wasn't me. You know what's not in, the, in, in that song at all? Anywhere in the lyrics? An apology. O.J. Simpson. He didn't apologize for shit. In fact, he wrote a book about how he would have killed the people he did if he did it. You know what's not in the author notes of that book? An apology. Uh, this is something you're not, probably not a lot of you are going to know about this, but uh, Meek Mill. Meek Mill just got in a lot of legal trouble maybe a couple months ago. Uh, he, he's being drug tested because he's on probation, and he hands them a cup of water. He hands them a cup of water. And he says, oh, but no, I've been taking these workout supplements, that's the reason my piss is like clear and, you know, not warm or anything. <laughs> and you know what? You know who's, who was under house arrest? Meek Mill. And you know what he didn't give them in court? An apology. <laughs> black people aren't apologizing for shit. So thank you, Justin Bieber, for trying to, trying to stop acting black. That's great. I'm excited about that. Speaking of music, I brought this guitar. Uh, you know... I'm a very long-winded person, I don't know if you can tell that already, I talk a lot. Uh, but you know, the people who are the worst at that are musicians. Musicians don't know when to stop. And there are so many songs that I hear on the radio, or just heard in my life, that are like three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. You can end most of these songs in 30 seconds, so that's what I'm going to do for you. This is how popular a song should have been. Do you guys know the song uh, I'm a Believer by the Monkees? Yes. Uh, it's covered by Smash Mouth in the movie Shrek. We all saw Shrek. You were there, it's a great time. Uh, here's how that song should have been. I thought love was only true in fairy tales. It is. That's, that's the end of the song. Uh, do you guys know that? 
you know the song Proud Mary by Creedence Clearwater Revival, covered by Ike and Tina Turner? Yeah. Yeah. That one can end even quicker. <laughs> that's a good job in the city. Not in this economy, you're not leaving any fucking <laughs> <laughs> Jumper by Third Eye Blind, anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. But not really, the song's called Jumper, so why would you title it Jumper if you want him to step away? It's counterintuitive, you're telling him to jump, I know. Okay, that one, not as much. <laughs> It's okay, I think I'll win you back with this one. We all know the song. It's Apologize, One Republic. It was like made in like 2007. Yeah. We were all there, 2007. We remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's how that song should have ended. Holding on your road got me 10 feet off the ground. And that was the last time I ever visited the South because it's really bad down there. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a Mason Dixon line and I don't go past it. <laughs> Here's probably, I'm, I'm assuming every, if you have a pulse, you should know this song. Uh, don't Stop Believing, Journey, anyone? Yeah. Okay. We all have pulses, that's good. Uh, this one's a little longer, a warning, it's a little longer, but it's how it should end. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Just a city boy born and raised in South Detroit. He took the midnight train and got stabbed. Why the fuck? songs. Here is how every Pitbull song should end. <laughs> Actually, on the subject of Pitbull, I heard uh, Pitbull is coming out with a new fragrance. I heard it's just a bunch of other people's fragrances, but he calls it original. <laughs> Yo, it's all Pitbull heckles me, I'm still gonna do these jokes. <laughs> but no, um, actually, uh, I do have some sad news that I'd like to share with you guys. Uh, I no longer have a girlfriend. Oh. Really sad. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of sad, uh, because I no longer have a girlfriend, now I have a fiancé. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, I proposed, that's exciting, I proposed back in December. I proposed at a really weird time for my relationship. Like, my fiance is Jewish, and I'm a sad sack of nothing, but I celebrate Christmas. So I had, to, I had to buy gifts for two holidays, and I proposed in the middle of them, which basically means my wallet's a masochist at this point. Like, it just likes just hurting itself over and over. It's like, oh, buy more gifts, birthdays are coming up soon, you hate yourself. That's my wallet right now. But no, uh, it's, it's being engaged is exciting, but it's a little weird. Like, now we're following, like, a relationship trajectory. You know how it starts? It's like girlfriend and fiance, wife, strippers, divorce, self-love, and death. That's how it goes. I mean, I'd ask my dad, but I don't know him. So. I, all I'm saying is my biological father's Ugandan, which makes sense when you look at the name of the country. Ugand. Duh. You know what the worst part is, like, I knew that for like five years that he was Ugandan and it took me like three of those to write that joke. <laughs> it's a sad part of that. But no, uh, no, it's very exciting being engaged. Uh, I think one of the weirdest parts of being engaged though is when I was looking for rings. Looking for rings was difficult. 
Uh, but I did finally settle on a nice one. Like it has a nice, it has a nice diamond on the outside. Uh, but on the inside, apparently there's a contract that says I don't get blowjobs anymore. <laughs> I, guess, I guess it's on the inside. I didn't, I didn't see that in the reviews. I might just return it when she's sleeping. I don't know. I can't say that she's here. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean that's that's what's going on with me. Uh, anything else? There's something else I wanted to mention to you guys. What other joke should I tell you? Well, I, I would tell you the joke about Helen Keller with a stuffed nose, but it's almost senseless. <laughs> okay, my name is James King. Before I get off the stage, though, I would like to remind you, uh, if for any reason there was something I said that makes you want to come up to me and talk to me after the show and, like, explain something, or if you had a problem with anything I said, I just want to let you know one thing right off the bat. Black people don't apologize for anything. <laughs> Yeah, that was awesome, right? Yeah. Okay, the next.